Field sketching on a boat like this is full of challenges to deal with the pitching and rolling of the ship. That is a really small price to pay though because the equipment that the scientists are using is amazing. So I'm drawing this equipment in my sketchbook and I'm hoping to take you on a tour of it with these drawings. So in order to understand more about our planet's carbon cycle, we need to understand more about the production of oxygen through photosynthesis and also the consumption of oxygen through respiration of microorganisms. So we're doing this using a unique instrument called a photosynthetron. The surface water samples are exposed to different light conditions that simulate different depths and time of day. Through these filters, we can measure oxygen production during the daylight and oxygen consumption at nighttime. Understanding whether particles near the surface of the ocean are big or small has implications in the carbon cycle. So I've brought a prototype instrument that measures particle size as we pump seawater through it. Inside the instrument, a laser beam passes through the seawater sample that we're pumping, and all the particles suspended in the beam scatter light in different directions. We're able to then measure that scattered light to tell us about the particle sizes in our sample. There are many things we need to measure, not just particle size and distribution. The physical characteristics of the water column are also very important. One tool we use is the wire walker, which drifts for days carrying a whole array of instruments. A buoy sends a GPS signal, and down below the surface, our walker goes up and down a 125 meter long cable, measuring temperature, salinity, oxygen, and sunlight. We also measure fluorescence and use several optical instruments to understand how many particles are suspended in the water. Finally, below the walker, a sediment trap catches falling particles that we can analyze later. One of the most exciting technologies we are using on board is virtual reality. A holographic camera dipped one hundredths of meter below the surface allows us to create these experiences. As particles pass through an opening in the camera, a laser wave interacts with them and stores the information as holograms. You can later use the wavefront information to reconstruct the different particles, shapes and positions in the water. That information can be displayed in virtual reality afterwards, which allows the scientists to interact and study these microscopic organisms in a whole new way. When you're developing new technologies, there's always risks. What we're doing here, we, although we are developing new technology, we're doing the same measurements in traditional methods. So even if the new technology fails, we're always going to be able to rely on the traditional methods. And we can use these traditional methods to kind of like calibrate, see if these are new technologies are actually performing well. Um, so, you know, in worst case scenario, we have something to fall back to, but so far so good. Everything's been flashing and running great, so we'll see. <laughs>